Grandma's 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 Grandma's
I hope I'm saying that correctly, from Oxford Mills, Ontario. I was due to meet her this week, but uh, she is in hospital. And I just want to do a little shout out to you, Patricia, and I hope that, you know, she's in the hospital and I really hope that you improve and that you're back on your feet in no time. So hi, Patricia, and uh, have a wonderful week. We will miss you this week. Yeah, this week is the tour, so the Cape Breton tour. Well, it's really an Inverness County tour, but uh, I'm sure we'll be doing it again next summer, but looking forward to meeting some of you folks that have signed up for it. So that's going to be awesome. And uh, so I would like to bring to the kitchen the lovely Mary Jane Lamond International Gaelic singing star that we take ownership of. Hello. Oh, thank you. Mary Hello, Jane. Everybody. She's a wonderful wonderful uh you know you you've you've passed this made the gaelic so popular in in all every place you go and i just love you've made some of those songs just such a a modern style to it as well as the old style and really 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 awesome oh thank you so so when did you start your interest in gaelic well i was really um I was always interested. My father's parents were Gaelic speakers okay. and spoke it to each other in the house. Okay. And um, and I heard it growing up and was always curious about it. We I grew up a lot in Ontario and in Quebec. My father for my father's work, we moved yes. a lot. And um, uh, but I remember in Myra, after church, all the people would be standing around their suits and ties and speaking in Gaelic oh. and laughing, ah. like a lot of laughter. So I associated that with it. So. In the late, when was that? In the late 80s, I moved back to Nova Scotia from Montreal and um, I joined a Gaelic choir and as part of that I ended up at this um, milling frolic in North River and that oh, was like, yeah. I call it my Gaelic epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> I had this moment of like, oh, I want to, I have to learn Gaelic so I can sit at that table. I certainly never meant to be like a touring musician. That just all just sort of happened from just singing in parish concerts and things yes. and then I made this CD with the be in our heritage which was just supposed to be like for learners basically but it got nominated for east coast music award i've had many many trips to scotland some to europe japan a lot in the united states yeah i think at one point we figured out that we had actually either performed in or driven through 48 states oh my god oh that's amazing yeah so just thinking that you're bringing that language of our forefathers to all of those people and they're loving it well, it's a beautiful language and a beautiful song tradition. It's such a rich yes. song tradition. And then, of course, I always had um, Wendy with me. Oh, yeah, it's Wendy McIsaac playing the fiddle. That's pretty attractive. Yeah, she, she's 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 great. Oh, I, I I I've been watching the YouTube videos and so great. But anyway, here we are, and we're going to make these brownies, and they're the simplest recipe that you could imagine, and. Um, so we're going to start off with three quarter cup of white white rice flour. I'm going to just put it in a separate bowl. That the frozen picture is frozen, but uh, it's not frozen at our end. No. I'm not sure, but yeah. anything is possible because of this um, lovely internet that we have here on East Street. <laughs> I see that. Hi, Hilda Gugu. I hope it comes back for you. So we're going to keep on going, and I'm going to turn this down so that you can see the bowl. And uh, we're going to put in three quarter cup of, um, of this white rice flour. This is a one quarter cup measure, so just making sure and I'm just leveling off the top. And the thing with this, uh, this flour, you feel a little bit of the grain in it where, where regular flour is very soft. And you'll get that in the finished product too, but it, they taste amazing. They taste amazing. So, next is a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Mary Jane, maybe I'll get you to do that. Sure. And this is where the mess starts happening. Uh, <laughs> half a teaspoon of that, and a half a teaspoon of salt, and I'll just measure that out in my... I, I, I tend to not measure sometimes. And really, if you want to give that a stir with the whisk, sure. just so that mixed up, and then we're going to set it aside. And now I'm going to take this, 
and uh, we're going to put in here five tablespoons of cocoa and I'm sifting it because of the cocoa tends to be clumpy if I don't sift it or any sieve will do or if you have a sifter it thinks that's two right yeah three four and five and if you just want to stir it with that until it disappears down into the bowl. Mm -hmm. And I have at the ready, I have a half a cup of um, canola oil is what I'm using, but you can use vegetable oil too. There we go. And I have it all Should over I just myself. Put this yeah, if, just I'll, if this I'll, was me baking, that would be all over me by now. <laughs> every every cupboard door would be open. <laughs> I, that's I one. drove my mother crazy when she'd sit and watch me cook as she came to my house. She's like, right? she said, it'd be easier if you just put that away. It's like, yes. well, it's too late. <laughs> I know. I I don't make too bad of a mess. I, I really like to have everything ready and so I don't have to reach too far. And I mean, this show has actually made me even more so, uh, more careful. I do need Stop the whisk. Talking. I need that whisk. So here's a half a cup of oil. You can stir that lightly so that it doesn't powder up a little bit. And to that, I am going to add a half teaspoon of vanilla. I don't really, I'm not great at measuring this either. So just I love a little, vanilla. there we go. It's, it's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. And to that, I'm going to add a cup of white sugar. This already smells fantastic. Isn't it? Honest to God, what this is the cocoa? This is just happy food. <laughs> hey, my mother made the best brownies in the world. Oh, yeah, did she? Yeah. Uh, I, Wendy, I just... Wendy will attest to that, my bandmates, because mm -hmm. when we went to Montreal, I'd bring brownies from the house. Uh, and... Here, I'll let you do that. Yeah, and uh, just so you know, was, uh, just a year ago, was about a year ago you lost your mom? Uh, not even February. February, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my god! Just this this year. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was like a year ago, just before. No, COVID. no, just recently. Yeah. Yep. It's 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 very hard when you lose someone like that. But you have good it's a memories. Big change in life. Oh, I have great oh, memories. Great memories. Adding two eggs here, people. Okay, I'm just gonna stir this up. Look, and we're almost done. So, I'm gonna just stir that until it's really mixed. But I wanna show you before I add the dry ingredients that I prepped my pan already. It's an eight by eight pan. I sprayed it a little bit underneath to help the parchment paper uh, stick to it. And I use these bulldog clips that someone on there many months ago said that's what she does to keep the parchment paper from flopping in onto your batter. What a great tip. So thank you. I don't remember who it was, but uh, this is all ready when we go to, uh, to do that. And uh, got my cookbook too. I just want to see how everybody's doing. Oh, it smells good. I see people are making this at home. There's some of them are cooking along with me. Some people uh, just watch and they might make it later in the week. And some people just watch for entertainment purposes because sometimes I can, I, I can talk a lot. <laughs> this is my first cooking show, by the way. <laughs> it is. Of all of the television, the, all oh, the things I've done, I've oh, never been on a cooking oh, show. Um, I'm so happy that this is the first <laughs> experience. And right here in Cape Breton. Exactly. Where it belongs. Okay. It so, was a gorgeous drive today. Was it really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just... We're, we're, there, there's this excitement in the air because in not too distant future, in the not too distant future, Celtic Colors is happening to a degree. Yes. Online a lot. And I'm actually going to MC one of the concerts. Oh, um, great. The, the dancing one. Oh, great. On the Friday night. Uh, going over it's to everything to, I remember to. Yes. Yeah. I did mm -hmm. it last year. Oh. It's, it's a different kind of an experience without an yeah. audience. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, I'm sure it will be. But if you be. think about it like doing a TV show or like doing this, you'll be absolutely fine. Yes, 
Oh, yes, I, I will love it. Hi, Deborah Tate. She's from BC. She's a great follower. Okay, we're gonna put this back down so we add the last parts of this. Can you see? Oops, there. That's better. So in here, I'm gonna get Mary Jane to stir another little bit. I'm gonna add this a little bit at a time. And uh, we'll probably do three stirs. And I'm gonna add a little bit more. It's getting quite thick. Yeah, it will be a thick batter. My mouth is watering. <laughs> Get to lick the ball, Mom. <laughs> oh my God! Did you see my Did you see my sign over there? What's it say? Homemade. It says "Homemade with Love." In other words, I licked the spoon and I kept using it, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to okay, take over? Okay. Let me give a little last stir to that. Now there's a professional stir. <laughs> it's easy once the the first part was done. So I'm going to get rid of the whisk now. I'll bring the bowl over. Or the there we go. Now I'll be watching. <laughs> now into this, at, at this point, you can just bake them exactly like this. Or you can add walnuts or pecans. And uh, <laughs> she did it. She did it. I'm using pecans or pecans. Somebody said pecans belong under the bed. So what? on. Oh, pe pecans. pecans. I, got, I just got it. I'm a little slow on the uptake. <laughs> so I'm, use, I'm using pecans today. Look at that. I had a so, great aunt in Halifax, and somebody said that to her. She just said it big stuff. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's it's like tomatoes, tomatoes, and, you know, just to the scones or scones, and we all, it's either English or, or American English that we use for pronunciation for some of these things. Mm -hmm. Some are fancier than others. Okay. And this is it. Now, this is going to go in a 350 oven for 30 minutes, but before I put it in the oven, I... I'm also making supper, but I'm not teaching you about the supper, but in a way, I've shared the recipe already. You have it, and I spoke about this recipe on the show before that I had made it with the borson uh, cheese. So I'm going to bring that over because I'm going to put them in the oven at the same time because they both take 30 minutes. One second. Borson cheese, yep. Do you love that borson cheese? Yes, I have a funny story about that cheese, if that's what I'll tell you. Oh, yay, sounds good. I was uh, in, uh, traveling in London with a friend when I was about 18, and we had a, my mother had a cousin whose husband was in the diplomatic corps, so we went invited for supper, so we didn't eat all day to save the money. Oh my and we gosh. got out there, she put one of those little cheeses out and gave us a glass of sherry, it was all very fancy. <laughs> we demolished half the cheese when she went into the kitchen, and then we were in there trying to press it down and make it look like we hadn't eaten so much of it. <laughs> I, there's actually an ad out like that about the Borson cheese. People are coming along and they're trying to fix oh, it is up. There? Oh my God, that is funny. That's a real story. Yeah. Maybe that's where it came from. Yeah, maybe. So this little Borson recipe is. Um, I'll, I'll just show. I'll show, show you. I'm putting this in the oven. Whoops. There. Uh, in here, I have urban garlic Borson cheese. I have a whole bunch of tomatoes, little cherry tomatoes, and I put some olive oil in there. That's going in the oven for 30 minutes, and the squares are going in for 30 minutes. Now, this really should be cooked at 375, but you know what? I'm doing 350 because of the, uh, the, the brownies. So, I'm going to get you to hold that, and we're going to put this in the oven. There's chicken already in there, and we'll be cooked in five minutes. So, I'm going to put that at the back. I'm going to put it right here. Don't burn yourself. Oh, I just had this terrible vision of him dropping that on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to time that for 30 minutes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now, I'm just going to talk to the people for a second. So, um, I'm also cooking some chicken on the side there, uh, just 
what I did was I mixed up, um, I don't know, a few, I had three chicken breasts, boneless chicken breasts, and I uh, patted them down so that they're, they're about that thick all along with, uh, with my little, uh, what do I call it? Meat I can't think. The meat tenderizer? The meat tenderizer. I love this. This, this is the one. Oh, wow, that's This nice. is the one I, I, I use. This is the meat tenderizer. I use this side, the flat side, and I pound down the chicken. It's heavy, too. Yeah. And then if you want to tenderize steak, it just, <clears throat> it comes off. Or get your frustrations out of it. Oh, something. yeah. It's a, it's a dangerous weapon. Sure is. But it, it transfer it over to that side. And you like your steak, whatever, you tenderize your steak like that. Pretty cool. But anyway, I, I d used the flat side to do the chicken and, and to, you know, not have a hump in the middle of the, of the boneless chicken so that it's kind of flat. And I mixed up in one bowl uh, some uh, mayo and some Parmesan cheese. I can't tell you the amounts, like maybe three tablespoons and uh, of, of each and or whatever. And then I coated each chicken breast with that. And in another little bowl, I had gluten-free breadcrumbs, and I put a bunch of basil and oregano in that. So I coated the, the, the chicken, and I flapped it over into the other bowl, and I put it on a piece of parchment paper, and I put it in the oven for an hour. And there's five minutes left in, in the chicken. And so with that borsan uh, dish that I put in the oven, um, just before that, that the 30 minutes is up, uh, I will be cooking my gluten-free rotini pasta is what I'm using, so that the pasta is nice and hot, and I'll, I'll throw that in, uh, drain it, and throw it in with the, the hot borsan cheese, and I'll put a whole bunch of spinach in there as well, and you mix it until the, the, the spinach kind of just kind of melts, and you serve it just like that. It's really good. Mm. It's really good. Sounds delicious. And it's easy. You know what? It's fast. And I love quick and easy. <laughs> Somebody's wearing, wondering where to find the tenderizer. That, oh, well, I, you should know by now. <laughs> where do I get my kitchen gadgets? <laughs> Pampered Chef. Or my daughter sells Pampered Chef. And oh. She used to, like 15 years, 20 years ago, she... Um, she was selling Pampered Chef, so I got a lot of Pampered Chef back then. And since I started here, uh, she said, I'm going to start back selling it. She lives in Alberta. And we just it's just so nice because it keeps us connected. And she's so far away. Yes. And she knows of all these new products that are coming out. And she'll let me know, and I'll order that. And I've had parties. And I, it's, it's just great. And they really stand behind their stuff. But I really, I really like that. Feel the weight of it. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you guys would just love to hear Mary Jane's voice. Um, here we are right there. And so Mary Jane, I have a stool over there in front of the couch. If you want to sit on that or if you want to sit sure. on the couch or whatever sure. you want. And I'll get the camera over there. Okay. And um, we'll, we'll uh, let you take it away from there. And I'll dilly-dally here in the kitchen. Okay. I'm going to have to get you to turn the music off. Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. That's, that will set me out of the... Yes, it'll be, you'll key. be in the wrong key. Uh-huh. Okay. Got it. Okay. So what am I singing here now? A couple of songs, or...? Yeah, two to two songs or something like that until the... the uh, until this is um, cooked. So we've oh, got... So a, half an hour. Yeah. Or I will, we can talk, too. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see now. Have How's your chicken? That's the chicken, and I'm going to get away from that window for that light. How's that, Mary Jane? Somebody says, I, Pat Cormier says, wants to see the chicken. I want to see that chicken. Oh, I will bring it over to you. <laughs> Hold on a second. So, uh, All right, well, I guess I'll start. Um, I'll have to sing in the key of the timer. <clears throat> I start with I'm going to start with um I should have thought about this oh, I'll start with the song I sing a lot actually I learned this song from a a very fine singer from rear Christmas Island called Peter Jack McLean and Peter was a a great friend and uh like so many of the older singers at Cape Breton they were so incredibly generous uh with sharing their songs and teaching and and correcting when I needed correcting too so that was great. 
So this one is, was composed by a poet called the, uh, well, he's called, known as John McLean, the Bard McLean, and he came and settled in the early 1800s in Antigonish and Picto, well, first in Picto, I think, and then Antigonish. But this is a song that he composed on the, uh, in Tyree, where he was from, the little island of Tyree in Scotland, before he left. And the story behind the song is that, um, as was quite common, I am going to sing. I'll shut up soon. I'm going to sing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the story was that this Angus McNeil commissioned the bard, which was quite common, to write a song for him, compose a song for him, as he was leaving, working on the bard's father's farm and going down to the lowland to look to seek his fame and fortune, or his fortune, anyways. And um, he was, in, and and to make it kind of a love song to this Katrina. Um, but when I looked in the book where it was published um, by McLean Sinclair, I can't recall the name of the book right at the moment. Um, it actually said that the Angus never ended up marrying um, Katrina. He didn't. No, he married an older woman with more money. <laughs> <laughs> I told that story, and my got my favorite reaction to that story ever. I told it in St. Peter's, which I think it was during Celtic Colors. Someone at the very back of the Lions Hall called out, "Go Angus." <laughs> I move over so you can get on camera or, um, or you're all right I, I, I'm okay all right all right I'll sit beside you I love listening to the to you oh, how about this how about this I go on this side I think that's the angle uh, that, that's there's more space in yeah, yes that's we're professional better. we're better, more professional we have to get <laughs> okay um Chato kerfan lu mak tramer manual, Chadjian mi orin sutoi bevalum, Kermi bakorok, nor hook mingawak, Ganina koya honingana, O arun skaratu er mother, O arun skaratu er mother. To hain a run, skara to and mad, Gareta who crook, Hachi and Ponyer gone. Gurmi vasta chuman gak me alling, a toko gadic, sakadic viawak, a piardi hound, ernion the altmo vadal, them the sun arm shows and tying nangawav. O Arun Skara to her mother, O Arun Skara to her mother, to hate Arun Skara to her mother, Gareta who crook Hachi and Panyer gone. No nation go as it, she won't can bala, the potty cow down and yaller meow. I take me later, they can in Gawi. I miss a task and kind of hinky. Oh, a rune's got a two head matter. Oh, a rune's got a two head matter. To hate a rune's got a two head matter. Get it a hook, Hachi and Panier gone. Is to Hatriana Hachi and her mother. Great the stories a rainbow yawk. Hat it be boy och, can boss can bar och, ye need a for of a clutch na herig. Oh, her runes got a to her mother. Oh, her runes got a to her mother. To hain a rune scudder to and mad, great a hook, a chin panier gone. Oh my god, it's, I wish I understood it, but I love this, know the story. But, and you well, know, in the story, he's complaining like that he's in the, he's down in the lowlands and he doesn't speak any English. Okay. And the bosses are taking advantage of them and he's sending his wishes back oh to my Katrina gosh. and saying that she's beautiful and faultless and. And most importantly, related to some important McLeod people. <laughs> you see that quite often, like that genealogy, because as you know, it's a big part of the culture. It's oh. like, who are you? And who, who are, are you? you? Who are you from? Oh my God. 
Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I have to show you. Oh, I have to just show you. Who am I from? Oh wow! There's my family tree. Oh wow! All the way back to Sky. Oh Sky! Inside. My family came from Sky too. Oh, oh yeah. Well, they think I, uh, on one too. side, on uh, one side. Um, uh, it, it was uh, the Lock Harbor area, right? Uh, uh, and then there was the Beatons of Sky, and a, a fellow that that fought in um, what the Culloden. Oh wow! That's there's there's a relation there too. But anyway, my brother, my That's brother, just like having somebody come on the Mayflower. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Actually, the Lamonts came from North Hewis, but it turns out they were originally from Sky, really? and they just gone a generation or two earlier. Um, just to take North Uist and then got kicked out of there. Imagine. Oh came my God, to... the story, just the story of how they came here and it's just to be honored. I went to the grand opening yesterday off the little Gaelic school in Mabu. Oh, was it, was oh, it yes. on yesterday? It was on I yesterday no afternoon. Yeah. I'm, so, I, I'm so bad on Facebook. Um, I was you... so embarrassed this morning. I don't know how to really use Facebook. <laughs> And I wanted to share something about that we were doing this this afternoon, and I ended up just sharing the video of myself. <laughs> so I put, I put a comment. I was like, I really didn't mean to share this like video of myself. I was trying to tell you about tunes and wooden spoons. I was like, oh. And of course, people immediately start sending likes. I'm like, no, 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 no. Can't take it back, though. You can't. No, there's no but forgiveness. But I should be watching Facebook more because, well, I haven't really. I just, as I was telling Mary Janet, I just... Ended up moving, clear my parents' apartment, getting home, and then my partner Glenn is moving into our house in Glendale for the first time. We've been together for 21 years and never lived together oh full time. Oh my gosh! Isn't that and he something? came with all his stuff. And Wednesday. Oh, and then to make, top it all off, he also had planned months ago. Three buddies were coming, and they were having a golf weekend at the house. So it was just like. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, you're living by yourself, and then there's all of this happen. Yeah. It's a good happening, though. Oh, it's great. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be really... Yeah. It's, it's, I feel like I'm starting my third life. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would be. It's different. But, I mean, Mary Jane lost both of her parents in this last year. Mm -hmm. It's it's devastating to, I didn't to lose, lose them, them, actually. That you didn't lose them. would have been very care careless of me. <laughs> <laughs> good that you can find that were they were they humorous people oh my father was absolutely very funny very very sharp-witted yeah. Yeah, yeah he was um actually i'll just tell you like even when he was so sick at the end and he was su suffering but we had to get a power of attorney done and he wasn't able to physically sign his name but he could verbally say so we had yes. to have two witnesses well we had have a witness and we had these two notaries come okay, to the okay. apartment and meanwhile, the witness, his caretaker, didn't realize he needed his ID, so he went down to his car. So we were sitting there, and the two notaries were chatting among themselves, and my father forgot why we were there. Yeah. <laughs> and so I said, he said, um, what, remind me, what, why are we here? And I said, well, we're going to get a power of attorney, uh, and you're going to, they're going to witness this, so it'll be all legal. And he said, oh, yeah, what, what do we want the power of attorney for? I said, well, so that I can deal with mom's estate on your behalf and with your banking. And he got this really... <laughs> He's so bad, and these notaries didn't really know me, didn't know him, and he said, I bet you'll go straight to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I was like, he's just kidding. <laughs> well, I knew guys said that about me one time. She's like, I spent 20 years going behind her saying, she's just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know what? I, uh, that's, that's a great memory now, isn't it? Oh, yes. I love those funny. stories. Yeah, yeah that's great. great. Well... Oh. Now, I wanted to say one other thing there, that mm -hmm. that last song that you sang, there, a lot of our Gaelic songs are, are tunes, too. Mm -hmm. That's where they got the tunes, because th that could hear a fiddle playing that tune. And I don't know if it's a... Yeah, they're all in the same kind of a scale. Yeah. I think they have this, a similar aesthetic. Yeah. Oh, Definitely, beautiful. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's really beautiful. And... Uh, do you have any uh, other funny stories from traveling? I'd love to hear anything crazy that ever happened to you uh, overseas or in the U.S. Um, I bet you there's lots. Oh, there's lots, but now you ask me, I won't be able to think of anything. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I'm just like, um, do you ever see that show, Mr. Bean? Yes. I'm Mrs. Bean when it comes to an airport. <laughs> it's like the passport is lost every two minutes. I've lost so many boarding passes. <laughs> and 
I was so grateful when they all came onto the phones. If I could yes. hang onto my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Last night we were in Europe. Uh, when was that? Forget when that was. Probably two years ago. Well, I guess it would have been. Yeah. yeah. And um, we got to back to the airport in Vienna, and my passport was missing. Oh my god! It had gosh. fallen out of my purse in the van, but luckily the person driving the van was still around, so I got in touch with him, and he found it and came back to it. But it was close. Wow. I was just like, oh my lord. Oh dear. I used to do that. And back, I remember one time I had to, an Actra Union card. Yes. Um, which isn't really a proper ID, but I was, it was when Canadian Airlines was still existing. And I oh, got geez. to the airport, no wallet, no ID. <laughs> I got there and I was, I was running a bit late and I was really tired. Anyways, so it turned out the guy on the desk was a fan. And he said, do you have anything with your picture on it? And I said, uh -huh. I have a stupid actor card. That's yes. a union card. And he's like, oh, that'll do. We'll go upstairs and they let me on. Oh, my gosh. Close calls. Oh, yeah, I've had them all the time. Yeah. It's just like a calamity Jane, I call myself. <laughs> my mother used to say to me, if your head wasn't attached, you'd lose the two. Oh, yeah, famous, famous last words. Yeah. I'm just going to, there, there, that's better. So I am going to go into the kitchen. And if you'd entertain them with another song, I'll have a look at the timing. But actually, you know what? Too bad you don't have your step dancing shoes on. I could sing a Porsche to Beale. You wouldn't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> there might be an earthquake happen. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to bring the chicken over to show. Was it Pat Cormier, you say? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe others would like to see that too. Okay. I'm going to sing. Well, you were talking about tunes, so maybe I'll sing a Porsche to Beale. Yes. Just to... A lot of the songs are, of course, quite sad and... <laughs> I remember what this this is the kind of gives you an opportunity to sing something lighter. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so there? so this is the chicken with the gluten-free um there. <laughs> and uh it really smells. It does. Smell really, really smell good, good yeah. you know? And uh so there you go, Pat. <laughs> okay, so this is um I'm assuming that everybody should I assume that everybody knows what a Porsche de Beale is? No, you shouldn't assume. Okay. Yep. Um, so it's a sung fiddle tune. So they're real words, but they're, um, they're, I really want to touch people's comments. I have to stop looking at that. I, Focus, I Mary Jane. Um, they're real words, but they're quite silly. Um, for example, um, yeah, the dog that ate the marakin, which is a kind of a sausage, uh, the lupindu, which is another kind of sausage, ek ruri, that belonged to Rory. So those are like, so either they're quite, or how do I dance this beautiful dance? How do I dance a straight reel? How do I dance a beautiful dance? The pin is gone from the bottom of my coat. That they're, <laughs> they're really chosen to imitate that bowing, that very distinctive bowing style and the, the, the Scottish snap, they call it, or um, or the rhythm of the reels, or the fingering of the pipes. You can hear that in there too. So, here we go. Um, what will I sing? Na kaina yik na barakinstu. Okay, so I'm starting with the Strass Bay, and then I'm going to go into a reel, okay. even though I have no dancer. Here, here came we go. all the way here, no dancer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Na kani yik na marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a kani yik na marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a kani yik na marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a kani yik na marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a shana china marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a shana china marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a shana china marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a kani yik na marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a kani yik na marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a kani yik na marakin sta whoop a doo we crood in a kani yik na Marakins to whoop a doo, we crudy. Kindy yik the Marakins to whoop a doo, we crudy. To shine a shine the Marakins to whoop a doo, we crudy. Shine a shine the Marakins to whoop a doo, we crudy. Shine a shine the Marakins to whoop a doo, we crudy. And a kindy yik the Marakins to whoop a doo, we crudy. Yake a stomach a key and yake in a cousin of my yake a stomach a key and vision at a hoary. Yake a stomach a key and yake in a cousin of my yake a stomach a key and vision at a hoary. Yoshanara Nagasim's cash and a vanity. Yoshanara Nagasim's kippay. 
Yoshinara Nagasi Pash and the Badadi, Yoshinara Nagasi, Mishk Payatashi, and Makaki Kikin's Wajik Karaka in Ban Makaki Queen's Warrior Yard, and Makaki Kikin's Wajik Karaka in Ban Makaki Kikin's Warrior Yard, Domaki and Akin Fairbier of Axon, Domaki and Akin Fairbier of Rai, Domaki and Akin Fairbier of Axon, Domaki and Akin Fairbier of Rai. Woo! You know, I haven't, in the last, of course, there aren't many concerts. The last time I performed was at Celtic Colors last year. Seriously? Yeah. I well, yeah. Been doing any performing. And my sister, when my sister was in kindergarten, she was pretty hyper as a kid. And, well, I think she'd be okay with me saying that. She yes. was active. And um, in kindergarten, the teacher was trying to calm them all down. She said, we're going to see who could be quiet its longest. <laughs> and she said she was quiet for a long, long time. And then she became afraid she had lost her voice. So she let up this big scream. Oh, and I woke up this morning, I was thinking about that story, I was like, can I still sing? I should have checked this before this morning. But you really feel it. Like if those poor Seville, they use a lot of little muscles and if you're not doing it all the time, you really yeah. feel it. Yeah. Oh, I, I, there's nothing nicer than watching somebody sing a Porsche Beal and the dancer dancing. The, the percussiveness, it's just so amazing. Well, the nice thing about it too is you can generally, because the voice isn't as loud as a fiddle, you hear the feet. Yes, more. yes. You can hear all the kind of yeah. intricate steps. Yeah, the nice hard sole leather shoe, like the old yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love singing for dancers too. It's a really, a, it's been a skill that I've been developing. I, I'm not saying I'm good at it, but, but I've been learning, you really learn every time you do it and different dancers and rather than just trying to plow on yourself and try and listen to the dancer or yeah 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 but it's hard because I'm not a musician and I'm not a dancer yeah last picked on every team <laughs> I could sing but would you not call yourself a musician with, with oh I don't mean I, like I'm not an instrumentalist so I don't yes. play the fiddle yeah you do play the do you play the accordion I play a little bit okay yeah, yeah I yeah. grew up playing piano but um and I started taking fiddle lessons in my 20s um but then I got ruined heart arthritis when I was 26 or 7, uh, and I had to, it was too painful. Yes, yeah. yes, Oh, boo. Yes. Oh, no. Send well, money. that would be. Send would. money. <laughs> <laughs> so how was the grand opening at the school, the Gaelic school? It's it so was, exciting that we have a Gaelic really school is. here. Honest to God, it's the sweetest, you know, that, that the last time I was to in that little house. Well, an Where interesting it? story. It's behind the convent in Mabu. Okay. It's a, it's a little house that's down there. Then a, a priest used to live in it. But going back, going back in history and time, in 1835, uh, my uh, great, great, great grandfather came to Mabu and his brother. And uh, they have, they both got a tract of land. And that's the land in Mabu. For anybody out there who knows the Mabu church, and the convent that that is part of the tract of our land oh. and in and and some at one point there the, the the land was given for the church and then uh in the late 40s i'm not sure what year it was i have the deed somewhere but my grandmother <clears throat> deeded the the portion of land that the convent sits on to the sisters of notre dame to uh, wow. build a convent and I still have 25 acres up behind the convent up, up on the hill but uh, I, I, I was just yesterday when I went there for this and uh, it was just there and there was a lot of Gaelic speaking um, you know speakers that were there and they would speak in English as well but there was there was something else I was feeling I was just thinking how proud our forefathers would be that that was their first language, and here this is happening on this land that they got by grant. And congratulations to the yeah. parents who put this together. Oh, I mean, it's unbelievable. So oh, and there's a, I think it's probably still open. There's a GoFundMe page for the school. Oh, is there? Yeah, there. Yeah, I, I think it's still or and they, you know, you can find them on Facebook, anyways. But the, the, that little and it is it or uh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And you know I mean. You can just look up Gaelic school in Mabu. I'm sure you'll and find you'll it. And you find it, yeah. yeah. And so they had uh, that we went inside, and there was a little play area, and then there was a another little few desks, and there was a little kitchen, and another room and bathroom, and it's really set out. Those teachers just 
you know, there's you could tell they were so, so proud of it. I'm so encouraged about that because, yeah. of course, all these years of learning these songs and for you know and and touring internationally, it might have raised the profile of Gaelic, but I sort of felt like I was clear cutting a forest in some ways that yes. wasn't being replanted. Yes, yes. And so uh, you know, through these mentorship programs like Bonus Bad, and since we got the Office of Gaelic Affairs and those programs yes. that they've been running, there's so many young people in their 20s and 30s and so on having children speaking Gaelic well so many but there's some some yes and a lot more people singing songs I can remember like I don't know like 18 or 19 years ago or maybe more but being at Glencoe uh at the dance afterwards and people saying to me sing a song sing a song and not one of them could sing a chorus with me and oh. I was like nope <laughs> yeah yeah exactly nope. I said if you guys want to learn the chorus I'll teach you the chorus and some of them did yeah, but I at that time I thought this is going to be over. Yeah, but I now I feel encouraged. Inter I feel like there's definitely. a new thing happening, and there's, I hope there's people just hope it will oh, there was it. so much work put into that. Like Kenneth McKenzie and yeah. his wife, and uh, just Emily, one of the teachers, and the other yeah, can't think of the other teacher's name right now. But Stacy McLean. Stacy, yeah. yes, and uh, and you know everybody was there. Like Katrina Parsons was there. Effie Rankin was there. there. Margie Beaton was there. I'm a loser. Steve Rankin and his wife were there. Uh, and all the kids that go to the school were there, and the parents were there, and it was it was a beautiful day. The rain held off until after, and uh, it was really moving. It was it was beautiful to see. And well, I'm Kenneth sorry played. I missed it. I just yeah. I've been so out of it. Yes, I, well, actually, any, I think I was actually just could barely move from all the moving. Yeah. Oh, any wonder? Any wonder? Yeah. I've got to go stir something here. The okay, pasta. Well, maybe I'll if you're as you're. Talking about children, maybe I'll sing a lullaby. Oh, that would be nice. Um, so, yeah, this is a song I learned from Margaret McLean from Boysdale. Um, Margaret was one of the few female singers that I knew when I started learning songs that I could go. And this is one of the first songs I ever went to somebody's house and actually learned the song from them in the house. Like, I had a tape of it, but it wasn't very clear. So I went and she... I first went and she had lost her daughter to cancer and she said she wasn't going to sing anymore because that was the person who sang with her. And I said, that's fine. Maybe you could just say the words for me and I'll write them down. And and then she asked me to try the tune. She was, you know, see if I had the tune or if I could get, uh, oh, I know what, I asked her if I could um, bring in a tape recorder at first and she didn't really want me to and that was okay. I was fine with that. We had a little visit and I wrote down some of the words and then I was trying to sing it back to her and she said, Maybe you should go to the car and get your tape recorder. <laughs> uh, anyway, so also about this song, it was funny. At the time, I was going to um, university to St. Francis Xavier doing a degree in Celtic studies. And I was going around asking the older Gaelic singers or people I knew that, you know, if they knew any lullabies, because I was kind of interested in Gaelic lullabies. And... Um, all of them said no, and then I learned this song, and I started singing it around different places, and everybody said, oh, my grandmother used to sing that when she was putting us to sleep, so I was just asking the wrong question. Um, okay, and there's a story behind this one, too, and because it's a Gaelic song, it's sad. Um, so his man has lost his wife, and he's singing this. There's actually kind of a beautiful story behind this. He's singing, sitting outside his house, singing this lament to the baby, saying spring will never come again for him he'll never remarry even though he knows he should and part of the story that goes with this is that uh the folklore attached to it is that she isn't actually dead the fairies have stolen her away and when they hear his song it's so mournful that they allow her to come home so that's the happy one Oh, and then there's a funny one I heard on tape about this one here, you you get a kick out of this. There was a woman called Sydney Cowell uh, from the States up here collecting. And um, she was recording somewhere, I think it was around Marguerite, and the tape wasn't marked with who was singing, but she, this man sang the song. And at the end she said, and what is that called, Mr. What is the title of that song? Now, Gaelic songs don't really have titles. So he was trying to make something up. He was trying to be pleasing to her. So he yeah. said, I guess I'll call that the bootlegger's lullaby. <laughs> And she said, oh, why is that then? He said, well, one time the Mounties were going around looking for moonshine, and they came up to a house, and so they threw the moonshine into the cradle, put a blanket over, and one of them started singing this song, so the Mountie felt so terrible he went away. <laughs> and that's a true story? I don't know. It's true or not. 
Oh, we'll say. All right, so here we go. Khachik mor mo ben gachi, khachik mor mo ben gud, khachik mahur mo lanu, no ho airim hud. Hik parer an yuer. I should start singing this faster, the brownies are ready. Hik da. Wait, let me start that verse again. Hik parer an wuchud. Hik dul ya kechriv. Hik fraser a wuchud. Acha kuesh mo ven gud. Chachik mor mo ven gachi. Chachik mor mo ven gud. Chachik mahur mo lanu. No hoairim hu. An croasan yetri. Satri fracker sa wug. Chachik mora dun vacant. Chareker sting wug. Chachik mor mo ven gachi. Chachik mor mo ven gu. Chachik mahur mo lanu, no ho airim hud. Get the yanning sa posud, mar pechor gan at ye. Chatok og no chia, refeel nan jade. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> and the last line of that last verse that I was absolutely able to choke out is really a beautiful one. I love it. It's, um, although I will remar I would, would marry as I should, the fiddles will not lift my heart. The strings of the fiddle will never lift my heart again. And spring will never come. So, yeah. That is beautiful. <coughs> So where are we now, Mary Janet? Am well, I... I'm going to bring the camera over here. Okay. And should I keep singing, or are you good? Um, or you're... No, that's okay. We'll, 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 maybe we'll get one more song before before we leave the people. Okay. But I want to <coughs> show them oh, this wow. what I'm having for supper, and you too. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh my goodness. So I'll just put the the. Uh, is down here so you can see there's the brownies they're all cooked and uh, they smell really really like normal brownies and here's what I've had for supper and I still can't see it I gotta put my glasses on I think you're a little too far this way there, there we, go. we go so here are it is the the borson cheese and the tomatoes are all done and I am going to get the um, pasta it's ready so do you put the spinach in there is that what you said I or will be oh yeah. you put it in the pasta yep okay and the heat of the pasta and and, um, and that uh, it just makes it all come together and I mean I I swear I don't know the measurements I just I just make a bunch of pasta I think that was about a cup and a half and these are gluten-free I'm just going to pour that in on top. Oh. And so it's a kind of, it's not a lot of dishes either. No, I know. That's what I love. And I have, I have a whole bunch of, of spinach here. I'm going to put that in on the top. I think I put, said a cup or so, but it's a lot more than that. I'm just going to, using my hands, and stir it all up. It's really, I don't know about anybody else, but yummy. my mouth is watering. Can you just smell how good this is? Oh my goodness. Doesn't it's it like, sound good? It probably should be illegal. <laughs> it probably should. <laughs> it melted, a whole melted porcelain cheese. Uh, uh, oh, there it is. Oh. There it comes. It's joining the pack here. Usually when I make this, where well, there's more, uh, I'll, 
I'll do two of these Borsan pieces in, in a great big pan and it's easier to mix up. Right. But after this gets all combined and incorporated. Could you yeah. bake the cheese in a deeper casserole? Yes. Oh, you could look, do what, look. I am no, uh, yeah, throw that in there. I am no, uh, you know, professional. But I just know that I love this. I love yeah, these are kind of the kind of meals like that and the brownies. It's sort of like you feel like they should eat them in the privacy of your own room. <laughs> yes, I know. And just with your fingers. Yes, it would just be so good. Now, what I find about this dish, and I've I've put that in there, is it's it's really um, it's good, like right now. Right. If you, it's not so good when you um, reheat. Reheat. I, as you, it doesn't get, you don't get that moisture, but there now that is ready to plate. And I'll just, I'll just plate that so you can, it looks pretty on the plate. Now there's lots of things that you can add to this. You have to use your imagination. Like you could probably have some garlic in this and, uh, you so it's know. It's pretty garlicky with that cheese. Yeah, but it's, it's herb and garlic already. But I mean, you could put lots of goodies in there that you like, and you can also put bacon in it. You know, it's up to you. And I am just going to add a few pieces of chicken to that. And there you go. And there we are. There's supper coming. Beautiful. There now. Now, I would love, even if you're just standing there, I'm going to make the tea. And we're going to, we're going to save the brownies for, 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 de for dessert, of course. I'm just going to lift them out of the pan here. That's the magic of this parchment paper. Of that parchment paper. Look, it's, it's the answer. It's the answer, I swear. And uh, it's for a lot less with, mess. Bake much with the spelt flour? I've never, I've never. I worked for a lawyer one time and they had, he had to have spelt bread. Right. And, uh, but I've never made it, but it, boy, did it ever look good. Yeah, it's tasty. It's yeah. got a really lovely nutty flavor to it. I don't know how well it would make, it's, it's very low in gluten, so I don't yeah. know how oh, okay. it would do for For those with baking. celiac? Yeah. Or, and, yeah. 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 It's not gluten free, but it's very well. So, I think, I'm just going to set the tea. Set the tea means I'm putting two bags in the teapot and covering with water. And did I miss any questions? Love parchment paper. I know they love parchment paper. And uh, so I'm going to get you. Last we, we we I got my kids to sing for their supper. So let's sing. This is why I haven't had a brownie yet because I might just go. <laughs> and I'm going to make the tea. And uh, if you want to stand up and sing here. Sure, and, that's uh, fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe I'll sing a milling song and um, oh yeah yeah maybe I'll, I'll I won't be able to hear you but maybe you want to try and um, sing along with me uh, a homemade spelt pasta okay that sounds good Holly McIntosh just wrote it her husband makes homemade spelt pasta Ooh, okay um, yeah so this is a milling song so this these were songs that were uh, specifically designed to accompany the shrinking of the cloth when the cloth comes off the loom the wool cloth it's sewn in a big circle and then everybody sits around a, i mentioned a milling frolic earlier now you get to know what it is so it used to be i think mostly originally women did this work i always say because it was such heavy work the women did it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but they you sit on either side of the table and they pass pound it on the table it's wet and then pass it around and sing these songs until the cloth is shrink shrunk to the right consistency for whatever use they're going to make of it and What's lovely about Gaelic culture is it's so full of songs. In fact, there was, you know, you just, people had singing for, I don't know, reaping and rowing and sailing and milling the cloth. So uh, these are particular songs. So I'm going to sing you a chorus. Then I'm going to teach you the words, and I hope you'll be singing along at home. It's a really simple one, and I think a lot of people will be familiar with it because the um, Rankin family recorded it. Oh, yes. Hey, Malenin. Hey, oh, yes, hey, Malenin. Do you take milk in your tea? I do. Yeah. Hey, Malanin, ho, Malanin, she, Malanin, a fedud. Hey, Malanin, ho, Malanin. So the first line is, hey, Malanin, ho, Malanin. Let me try that. 
And the next line is She Molanen Afer Ur. So She Molanen Afer Ur. And then the last line is Hey Molanen Ho Molanen. You got that, Mary Janet? I'm listening and I'm saying I got to do this. You do. Okay. All right. So here we go. Uh, so there's a two line verse. And um, and then we then you come in on the chorus. So let's demonstrate this then. Okay. Okay. Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen, she, Malanen, a fairwood. Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen. That's the chorus. Okay. And then okay. I'll start with a verse now. She, Malanen, a fairwood, ye, Jignard, a bar in jewel. Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen, she, Malanen, a fairwood. Hey, Malanen, woo, Malanen. Uh, she, Malanen, a fair works to Marine, her in you. Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen, she, Malanen, a fair wood. Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen, she, Malanen. Father, no smith, son, and she, to get and she, who boom Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen, she, Malanen, a fair Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen. She can't be let can top a heart to Malanen, ho, Malanen. She, Malanen, ho, Malanen. She can't be let can back snack Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen. She, Malanen, a fair Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen. Stieke ga mi laat kan baak snach knapper dan a gwoon. Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen. She, Malanen, ach, fair oor. Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen. Loor a wieka ach na waai gaas le goot aan un ja goel. Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen. She, Malanen, ach, fair oor. Hey, Malanen, ho, Malanen. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm going to pour. Anybody. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to pour the tea, and we'll have a sip of tea, and I'll say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, and, uh, goodbye, Mary Janet. 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 Goodbye, did he, he pour it in the saucer? No, but he used to boil the tea. <gasps> know all about that. This, well. That's the biggest smell of like, when tea gets that reminds me, of, of any smell that reminds me of him, it's like <laughs> the wood stove was going in the kitchen all the time <laughs> and the tea boiling on the back. That honest to God. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll let you sit down there. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, gonna I'm going to talk to the people and uh, have a little... A little farewell. Can I try that? Yes, absolutely. And uh, I was going to put some Parmesan cheese on, on the table, mm -hmm. but I didn't. <sighs> oh, were you ever on tour with Ashley? They're asking. Oh, yeah, yes, sure. many times she was on tour with Ashley. Yeah. I'm sure there's lots of stories there, I right. bet. I'm not repeating. You know, she's not allowed to repeat that. <laughs> well, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, we did a lot of touring together, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So I, I want to thank Mary Jane for coming today. And uh, sincerely, uh, it was just a joy to have you in my house. And it was, have somebody for a little visit, along with all of these wonderful people. And uh, I'm going to have a little strupak of tea here and have a little sip. And uh, saving the brownie for dessert. <laughs> and um, I just want you to know that next week, um, I don't have any entertainment c coming next week. Uh, it's Thanksgiving weekend, and um, I'm very thankful to all of the talent that has come. Uh, all uh, these Sundays that have been, you know, we've been enjoying one another's company. But I do have someone coming next Sunday. Um, it's Effie Rankin from Mabu. Effie... Uh, is from North Uist in Scotland, but came here to teach Gaelic in the school system back in the 70s. And then, of course, she fell in love with uh, Daniel Rankin. <laughs> and uh, she's just uh, the most magnificent baker ever. 
I swear I've never tasted anything when I go there and have had wonderful teas. But uh, she makes amazing old fashioned shortbread in the pan, in a big pan. And uh, she is going to be joining me next Sunday and we're going to be making uh, that traditional old fashioned shortbread and I can't wait. Uh, it's always a treat when you go to the museum in uh, Mabu, the and uh, the ladies all bring goodies for uh, for whatever they are, uh, you know, having a, a night for. And uh, and Drakic, by the way, is, uh, is the bridge. And there's a bridge in Mabu, and I guess that's why it's called and Drakic. So anyway, she's coming on, and we're, she's going to be, we're going to make that together. So it'll be a short show. There's no entertainment, but I certainly love to talk to Effie about her journey from Scotland to here. And... Uh, and her daughter is is Maddie, a uh, fiddle player in the band Bioluk. And uh, so you can connect with that because they were here playing with us uh, some tunes out on the deck a few shows ago. So anyway, uh, that's going to be really nice. And I'm really looking forward to that because I want to learn how to make that shortbread. I've not made it before and I'm looking forward to that myself. And so that's it for this week, folks. Have a wonderful Sunday and the rest of the week. And I know you know that you matter to me and I care about each and every one of you. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. And uh, I've had some wonderful emails from all of you. Uh, the cookbooks have been reordered and uh, will be restocked in all locations by um, the end of October. So looking forward to that. And um, just love one another because I love you. Bye-bye, everybody. Um, hey, hi, it's me, Charlie. Um, if, if you, you like Grandma's video, video make to make sure, sure to, to give it a like and subscribe. Give it a like and subscribe.